Hey everybody, today is the big day. We're finally taking my truck and we're gonna stretch it out. This Kenworth is gonna get an international rear clip on it. So we're gonna be calling it the Kenner National maybe from now on, but here we go. It's gonna be a fun episode. Stick with us. riding on the original Kenworth eight bag system back here so it's gonna be going to a four bag it's gonna ride so much better we've done this on some of our other trucks and for running end dumps and the kind of work that we do this is gonna be so nice we also block up our fifth wheels you can see I got blocks in there and that uh, keeps that rigid so that the trailer can articulate so yeah not only is it gonna look cooler but it's gonna ride so much nicer I'm excited. So let's get this baby backed in and uh, start tearing into it. Here we go. So we're hoping that to do this uh, project, we can leave the sleeper on the truck, but we know we're gonna have to take the fuel tanks off. This is the old splice line from where the truck was actually shortened before we got it. So we're obviously going to have to go ahead of that on the frame rail and uh, do our splice further forward. So that's why we're going to end up taking the tanks off. But we're going to try our best to do it somewhere in here so we don't have to spend more hours messing with the sleeper and things like that. So um, we, uh, we started getting our list together of what all we're going to have to do to the truck to get it prepared. Um, drain the fuel tanks out, drain the hydraulic. Uh, oil out of that tank over there, um, take our plumbing loose, uh, fenders off, things like that. So um, that's what's going to happen here. It's going to be nice to not be riding around on eight bags all the time. So let me show you what's going on in this one. Um, this reel is really clean. It's a 2006 and so it's got a lot of uh, good wiring, good plumbing on it. Everything's really solid. Uh, we'll probably end up you know welding in some holes we're gonna be replacing things with new hardware and bolts uh, but uh, we're gonna need to replace these studs because this thing originally had steelies on it and the studs are too short so we're gonna replace the studs uh, we're gonna block up the fifth wheel we have new airbags new shocks and proper gears that are gonna go in um, so that's what we concluded today these gears were 264 and that's just not going to work for what we have it's a ds404 housing with 264s and yeah that's just not going to fly uh some of you are probably asking what we're going to do for wheelbase on this thing well that truck that i'm driving currently is 220 wheelbase the plan is to make this thing uh, 270 altogether so um, it's going to be longer it's gonna look way better, but we're not shooting for the crazy long 300 inch wheelbase kind of club. So uh, still need to be maneuverable, still has to be able to do the job that we do. And uh, should ride amazing. I'm really looking forward to this. So um, long ways to go. We got our list started. Let me show you that. And uh, I've got a shopping list that I need to go pick up some supplies, but there's where it begins because I'm a fan of roadkill use cardboard and sharpies so anyway that's an update from day one and uh stay tuned let's get back to it Alright, so let me walk you through a little bit where we're at currently. Uh, we have the axles slid out and the differentials pulled on the old frame here. We're getting ready to lift the sleeper up and uh, we were fighting with the straps and chains last night. It's just not working out quite like we wanted to, so I'm going to 
create a lifting apparatus uh, to get that thing up and slide it back. Reason being, uh, we were hoping to leave the sleeper on, but the splice that we're gonna be making is like just a little bit underneath where the sleeper's at, and we just need some room to work in there. So that's what we're up against right now, but tanks are off and uh, things are moving along pretty smooth. The reason for us pulling the diffs out of this thing is we wanna keep our 355 gear ratio with our, our old diffs. So we pulled these two out, we don't want that gear ratio in this one, but definitely a lot cleaner setup and, and nicer suspension that's going to ride so much nicer. And this is about where our splice is going to be, 270, so we're adding about 50 inches of frame rail there. Yeah, that's where we're at currently. Things are going pretty good. So back to it. Here we go. When we put this sleeper on initially, we purposely made it as quick and easy as we could. So it's actually held on by two U-bolts sitting on blocks of wood on the frame. And it's just two battery cables to, uh, to unhook the electrical. It's got its own uh, fuse box for all the wiring and everything like that. Two heater hose connections underneath. We can just pinch those off and disconnect it. The problem we were running into last night is the pinch, uh, excuse me, the drip rail up here was starting to fold and do some weird things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up with a way to have probably a couple eyelets that are gonna be a permanent part of the sleeper that are in the structure. And I can lift it that way because this probably isn't gonna be the last time this sleeper has to come off or get moved. And uh, I want to be able to use it on other trucks at different times. So that's my idea. And I'm going to create a lift bar so that my chain can connect in the center. And then the eyelets will connect down here with links. And we can just lift straight up. We were having problems with running out of chain up top and just couldn't lift it up high enough. So that's what I'm working on right now. It should just take a little bit of time and we'll be up and off there and keep going. All right, so there is the support brace I've made to go under the headliner of my sleeper. I drilled two holes right in the support beams. And drop those babies right in there. Snug fit, and got some silicone the water out okay let's tighten it down so got the lift hooks installed into the roof got it siliconed up and you can see down here got a reinforcement plate and the through bolts all tightened down and then for my lifting apparatus got some D hooks welded on and my center lift point so that should allow us to lift right in the center without kind of squishing and pulling the, the sleeper together because that's what we were worried about is all the pressure pinching together. So we want to lift straight up. Yeah, see how well I do it. of day two of the project we got sleeper off the tanks off and uh, we realized today that this thing has actually been cut and spliced twice so it's even weaker than we realized and it's gonna be really nice to be able to get all that nasty rotten stuff off and move to the uh, the better newer setup and and uh, lot more strength so we got our differentials installed today drive shaft in um, we're knocking out some of the, the wheel studs they need to be longer um, shocks around we're waiting for our airbags to show up and uh, things like that so we're we're working with what we have available to us uh, waiting for parts to show up at certain times but uh, you can see here we 
eliminated our ABS because on that old Kenworth, ABS wasn't required. And so we eliminated the solenoids and the wiring and, and all those things just to keep things as simple as we possibly can. So yeah, really happy with how things are coming along so far. right along it's gonna be super nice so we're gearing up for tomorrow morning it's gonna be time to cut where we need to and and uh, cut this truck here mark did a fantastic job today of eliminating unnecessary wiring that used to be for the old studio sleeper that was on this truck at one time and analog brakes and things like that that aren't necessary and uh, just simplify a lot of those things so huge thank you to him I wish you could have seen the pile of wiring that was sitting right here just a little bit ago. I should have shot a photo of it, but incredible. Really, really nice to have that simplified. So here we go. End of day two, we're making good progress and we'll get the plasma out in the morning. <laughs> That's awesome. Little tension on it. It's hard to tell. It dropped a little bit, but it looks like it's going to stay okay, huh? Yeah, Under its own weight? Probably because it just dropped down onto these stands. Oh, sure. Yep. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, oh yeah. If it, if it falls, as long as it doesn't punch a hole in the tanks, that's... <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> It'll be fine. Looks great, man. Those are just laser straight. Way to go. That is slick. Yeah. Awesome. What an awesome machine, too. Man alive. Yeah, man. You have the right tools. <laughs> there you go. You hear that, Everless? We need sponsors. Brandon in Memphis? Yeah, there's more. There's Brian hiding back there. There it is. There's our wheelbars. <laughs>
last couple pieces of the drive shaft. Just got to mount our hanger bearing on that last one and drive line's in. Yeah. That's beautiful. All right, here we are, end of day five. Got the tanks on, got the blocks ready to go for the sleeper. Getting airlines and electrical figured out, hooked up. And uh, wheel studs are in, wheels are on for the final time. Uh, we're getting spacers set up to put the fenders on. Fifth wheel is blocked. Your bags, shocks. An issue with one hub, we got that taken care of, so yeah, more good progress today. Try and finish it up tomorrow and so get back to work Monday. So check this out. One of my favorite things about what Mark is doing here is he's able to utilize the weather pack connectors on this taillight panel with LEDs and the cutoff that was international and go all the way up front to the Kenworth connector and utilize that as well. So we have factory style wiring all the way back. No butt connectors and butchery here. It's just awesome. And here we go, end of day six recap. Getting ready to take it out on its first test drive. Now, we do not have the frame painted yet or the deck plate. That might be a week or so until that shows up. So this is a temporary deck plate until the other one gets here. So uh, some of you have been wondering why all the hoses? Well, we run end dump trailers like this one over here and each hose runs a different function of the trailer so that's what that's all about but yeah so we'll still be filling in some of these uh, factory holes with some bolts and things like that we'll do a, a better paint job things like that but fenders are on everything's plumbed everything's wired stuff so i love it 355 gears are in we solid mounted our fifth wheel again that's part of running an end dump you got to make that thing um, completely level and secure and sturdy because it's your trailer that actually tips on those things. So that part's done. Hydraulics are all plumbed in. Yeah, I absolutely love what it looks like. Can't wait to get it out on the road, see how it drives. So, I'm going to set the camera down and we'll run it outside. I got to Put some fuel in it, hook up to a trailer, and run it on down the road. See if we need to work out any bugs. Pretty exciting. It's about to die, and my garage door doesn't want to go down, probably because I tripped the beam. And it's snowing, and it's dark. But anyway, yeah. Appreciate every one of you. Thank you for supporting the YouTube channel. I'm going to be putting a lot of this stuff on the YouTube channel, and uh, so I got a shop to clean up too. You can see uh, we got a big mess. So here it is. 
I have driven this truck a total of three days now on the field. It's working awesome. We do not have the finished deck plate yet, so you're kind of seeing it 90% finished, but this is what it is. The splice is right here underneath where the sleeper is. I'll explain and show you how we did all that. And uh, when the new deck plate is on and everything's finished, I'll make another video of that so you can uh, see the finished product. But here it is, after three days of work, it's awesome. I love the way it rides, I love the way it looks. I would definitely do it again. And uh, finally has that stance that is just so beautiful. So 270 wheelbase, we went from 220, so we added 50 inches of frame rail, added one additional drive shaft up underneath there with a hanger bearing. Turned out really, really nice. I'm extremely happy with it. I'll walk you around the other side too. Give you a closer look at our splices, our welds. There's three of us working for six days to get it all finished. So I should probably get a light under here so I can show you closer, but there's our weld mark right there and we have gusset plate combining the two sections where the splice is at there's five bolts on this side five bolts on that side there's undercoating sealant and it's caulked on the back side where the splice is at and uh, i have a couple things pulled out of the way so i can show you this a little bit better but yeah Let's see if i can shine my light in there for you a little bit see those gusset plates in there a little bit better that way. Right down in there. You can see our weld line. The frames were different in height by half an inch. So that means we're going to have a step from one old section. The Kenworth was a little bit taller. The International was half an inch lower. So we made them flush along the bottom for strength and the step is up top. And I knew that we could make up for that by shaving down the wood blocks that my sleeper sits up on. My sleeper is held on by U-bolts. You can see there, just sort of like a box truck. U-bolts hold that frame. And some rubber cushioning to support the rest of the sleeper. So it's simple. It makes taking the sleeper off, putting it back on relatively basic. It's really not that complicated and uh, works great. I love it. So now I will say this as well. There are many, many of you that would probably say, I would never splice a truck that way. I would never do it that way. You got to make a Z cut or you got to, you know, this or that. I want to be honest with you <sighs> to each their own. And I say that from the bottom of my heart. There's a million different ways to skin a cat. Some are better than others. There's different ways to splice a frame. Some are better than others. This is how we do it here. Doesn't make it right or wrong. Doesn't make it better or worse than anybody else's. If you want to put that in the comments, how you would do it, why you would do it, go ahead. But let me say this. I don't interact with the comment section on YouTube. It's just not where I hang out and I try and protect my kids from any negativity as well. My kids help edit these videos. So if you want to let me know how you would stretch a truck out, how you would add a, a cutoff or something like that, it's been done a million different times by thousands and thousands of different people. This is how it's done around here. It doesn't make it better or worse than anybody else's, but this is how we do it. We've done multiple frame stretches like this truck behind me over here. It has an identical stretch, identical suspension to my truck. This is the 84 and uh, it's awesome. It's 10 inches shorter than mine. So this one is 260, mine is 270. I will make a separate video when we get the deck plate set down on there and I get my rear hubs painted red. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm hoping it's gonna be finished in another week or two, something like that. Thanks for coming along. I really, truly appreciate each one of you. If you wanna comment down below, I appreciate that because it helps the algorithm. I probably won't see your comment and I don't respond to any comments on YouTube or on Facebook. If you want to interact with me, you'll find me at Instagram, at Flannel Phillip. And uh, 
we can chat there. So peace and grease everybody. Thanks again for coming along.